Hi everyone, in this lecture today we are going to talk about protocol layers. Now we have looked at the network edge, the network core, and you can already understand that the networks are complex and there are many pieces. For example, there are hosts, there are routers, there are links of various media applications, and there are protocols, there's hardware, there's software. And so the natural question is, how can we manage this uh, humongous structure? Is there any hope of organizing this, uh, organizing the structure of the network? The answer is, is yes, and that's why we are studying this course. And the, the answer to this question is layering. So let's look at an example here. So first, think of air travel. Air travel is a complex, is a, is a complex task. The way it happens, but it's easy because it's organized in layers. So let's consider this example. First, you actually uh, purchase the ticket for air travel. Then you, then when you reach the airport, you check in your bags, and then at the gates uh, you load, and then that it, the flight takes off on the runway. And the airport airplane is routed. So that say you're going from say. Uh, the United States to Europe, so it takes a certain path, that's the routing, and then once the uh, the routing has take, uh, taken place, the you arrive at your destination. So what happens is you first land on the runway. Notice the analogy, analogy between um, runway takeoff and runway landing. Once the plane has landed, the, uh, the passengers unload at the gates, and then you go to the baggage claim, and hopefully your baggage has arrived, and then uh, if the baggage has arrived, you go home. Otherwise, you go and complain about the ticket. So these are, it's nothing but a series of steps and it's organized in a series of steps. And this is what makes uh, air travel so e easy. Our routing in the air, our, our internet structure is also uh, organized. I should say the networking layer structure is also organized in a bunch of layers. And we'll look at that. So. Think about the remember this analogy, and it will help you understanding the layering of the uh, of of networks. Okay, so what are the different layers in the in the airline functionality? First, as you saw, is you have the ticket purchase, then you have baggage check, gates, <coughs> runway, uh, and airplane routing. The at the at the the airplane routing takes place at while you're flying and once you arrive at the airport there are again the same five steps so the important thing to note to note here is that each layer implements a service and the service provided by one layer is independent is kind of independent of the service provided at another layer for example when you are pur purchasing your ticket you are not worrying about what how the take plane is going to take off from the one way in fact, we are not even worrying about how you're going to check in your package. And so it's so this kind of layering helps, helps to divide the certain tasks up. And what they also help in is that you can change some of the functionality of one layer without changing the functionality of the other layer. For example, you purchase the ticket. Now, at the moment when you purchase a ticket, the per, a particular airport might be doing baggage checks in a particular way. But by the time you, <clears throat> the time say after three months when you're actually flying, the baggage checking one might be done in a separate way. So these layers are independent and the functioning of one layer is, is kind of, <clears throat> it does not influence the functioning of the other layer. The only thing is that there is a dependence. Only once you have purchased the ticket, can you go to the next stage of checking in baggage. Without purchasing a ticket, you cannot check in the baggage. And only after you purchase the baggage can you go to the gates. So going to the gates and loading and, and sitting on the aircraft requires you to have done the previous two steps that you purchased the tickets and you have checked in your bags. Okay, so this concept of layering is very powerful and it helps in dealing with complex systems. It's, it, it helps us analyze complex systems by baking, breaking the complex systems system into simpler tasks and and this is a concept that's not only used in networking but in a lot of other fields as well modularization as it's called in some other fields is helps in maintenance and updating of the system and as i mentioned earlier the changes in one layer can be done without impacting the other layer but then you might there are some uh, issues with layering as well and we'll not get into that 
uh, in a lot of detail in our lecture, the only, one of the major things is there's a loss of flexibility. There's a loss of flexibility. It's both good and bad, but loss of flexibility is one of the issues with layering. Okay, so what are the layers <coughs> of networking or the internet protocol stack to be, is, to be precise? There are five layers. The first layer is called the application layer. The second as the transport, the next the network, the followed <coughs> the network is a link, and then there is a physical layer. And here I'm taking a top-down approach. So the layer on top is the application layer. Fall and the layer at the very bottom is the physical layer. Now, what does the application do? The application layer supports different kinds of network applications. And some of the app network applications that we will study in the next chapter is our FTP, SMTP, and HTTP. And then what's the goal of the transport layer? The goal of the transport layer is to is to data is to transfer data between processes, and then the network layer is takes care of forwarding this kind of data and routing the data from the uh, from the source to the destination. The data link layer actually takes uh, <coughs> takes care of transferring data between a neighboring elements of a network, and the physical link is actually the bits the physical bits onto the wire. So we'll get into each of these layers in much greater detail. So if you're if you're a little confused and you do not understand all this, uh, understand the functionality of each of these layers, do not panic. We'll get into each of these layers in greater detail later. Now the only the one thing that you want to remember is the TCP/IP layer or the Internet Protocol stack has only five layers, but the OSI reference model, which was the first model that was proposed for this layering, has two additional layers called the presentation and the session layers. The important thing to note is, is that this OSI model, there are seven layers, the five that I showed in the previous slide and the presentation and the session, but the internet stack misses these layers. So the internet protocol stack does not have presentation and session. So we are not going to study presentation and session in this uh, in this course, we are only going to study the five layers of the internet protocol stack that are app tr application, transport, network, link, and physical. Okay, so in the <coughs> in the next lecture, in the next week when we move on, what we will do is we will start, we will look into application layer and, uh, and study some of, of these protocols like FTP, HTTP, and SMTP. Thank you, and with that I'll end this lecture.